I'm a teen entrepreneur, and I'm here to blow your minds. Get ready to rethink everything you ever thought about education. I think we all have a point in our lives that we would consider a defining moment, a single decision or event that changed the course of our lives forever. I know I've had one of those events. For me, it happened to be on international television when I was shaking the hands of Mark Cuban and Robert Herjavec on ABC's Shark Tank as I was accepting their offer. And from that moment on, my life and my education would never be the same. Even so, my education has been unique from the start. I am homeschooled. Now, the nice thing about homeschooling is that you quickly discover how you learn. For me, I discovered that I'm a very visual person, as opposed to a physical or auditory learner. I like to be able to see things and visualize them in order to understand how they work. Now, I know this concept might seem weird at first, but it's really an essential piece of life's puzzle. I remember uh, when I was young and growing up, really looking forward to visiting my grandmother's house because she had the full set of Britannica Encyclopedia. And that was exciting, let me tell you. She had literally a whole shelf of these big leather-bound volumes, and I used to look forward to our visits just so I could go and pull down a few books and learn something new. Now, I've always been an inventor. Um, started very early, as you can tell. <laughs> um, at the age of seven, I remember starting to bring some of my ideas to my parents, uh, only to discover that solutions were already out there. And that was kind of frustrating as a young inventor. I thought, if I have to wait until I grow up to make my ideas come to life, then someone's going to beat me to them. So uh, <laughs> kind of a motivation for me. And uh, I remember that, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think that that's probably one reason why Legos were one of my favorite toys growing up. Because I could create anything with them. Legos challenge you to visualize your final build in your head and mentally put together the parts that you have to reach your goal. I entered a program called First Lego League. When I was nine years old, I started a team with my two younger sisters, which are here today, and I also with some friends as well. Now, First Lego League is an international science and engineering program that was started right here in New Hampshire. And the cool thing about First Lego League is that not only does it have a robotics challenge, but it also has a project portion as well. Every year, First Lego League challenges thousands of middle school students around the world to solve real-world problems in overarching fields, fields like nanotechnology and climate change and space exploration. My team won the 2010 World Championship in First Lego League. And after that, we retired. But First Lego League really changed the way the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I decided to go out on top. But after that, my <laughs> but it changed my way of thinking. Previously, I'd always dreamed of working for a big company. You know, I thought of big companies like BAE or Google as being the people who worked on the cool things. But First Lego League, it opened my eyes. It helped me realize that I didn't need to depend on anyone else or rely on anyone else to make my ideas reality. I had the power to change the world. Now, I would quickly like to describe for you all what I do today. Uh, and I've been working on this for two years now. I am the CEO of Smart Wheel. Now, the Smart Wheel is the first intelligent steering wheel cover that helps prevent distracted driving. So it installs just like a regular steering wheel cover, and it detects when the driver is distracted and alerts them in real time to help refocus them on the road ahead. It also uses the power of gesture recognition to take all the distracting car functions uh, on your dashboard, like navigation or radio controls, and allow you to control them with just a tap or swipe on the steering wheel. It also comes with a companion mobile app that allows the driver to, of course, track their, track their improvement over time and identify ways to improve their driving. Now, over the course of two years, I went from not knowing the first thing about running a business to becoming a New Hampshire entrepreneur. How did I do that? And more importantly, how can each of you do that as well? It turns out, that entrepreneurship is the ultimate education. Let me run that by you again. Entrepreneurship is the ultimate education. I've learned just as much, if not more, through running a business than I did even in high school. And I was in a unique position because I did both at the same time. So while I was learning algebra, I was learning Java. While I was learning chemistry, I was learning how to create chemistry in an executive team. And while I was learning about America's past, I got to work on America's future. As a teen, sometimes I wonder why you know, some adults, they think of entrepreneurship as wishful thinking. 
Sometimes I think it's maybe because they have too much at stake. I mean, entrepreneurship is a big risk, and failure is definitely possible. But as a teen, I've been sort of able to bypass this inner struggle between fear of failure and becoming an entrepreneur. Enter the kidpreneur. <laughs> Now, I know he's not a teen yet, but one of my favorite commercials of all time was a Comcast commercial where the guy walks into the garage, to his garage where his kids have set up a tech startup, and they're employing their grandfather as an intern. <laughs> right there, actually. And I remember watching this for the first time and thinking, wow, these kids are in the perfect position. Not only do they have all of this, un this free unemployed labor available to them, their friends, and their grandfather is a you know, retired professional, but they have all this, these free assets as well. They have the free location, free utilities, free technology. Plus, they have the energy, optimism, and determination to achieve whatever they want. What other stage in their life will they have this perfect opportunity? Now, the only thing most kids are missing is the know-how and experience required to realize their big ideas. And that's where learning comes in, which brings me to one of the many life lessons I've learned through entrepreneurship. Almost nothing is as hard as you think it is. I remember as a, as a young entrepreneur and engineer, accomplishing things that when looking back might seem impressive, but they were really just part of the process at the time. For example, over the course of a month, I taught myself three embedded programming languages. Why? Because my high school robotics team kept switching them on me, and I needed to be capable in all three. I mean, come on. And then also, I sat down over winter vacation, and I taught myself how to write a mobile app because it was going to cost me 10 grand to have someone else, hire someone else to do it for me, and I did not have 10 grand. Now, I think that, I found that if you put your mind to it, you can absorb information very quickly. And I think that in the age of information, all the know-how you'll ever need is at your fingertips. I remember reading about a new mobile app that just came out that teaches students how to master algebra in a mere 60 minutes. In education, there's this gap between teaching abstract concepts in a classroom and transitioning them into real life. I see kidpreneurship as the other half of education because it allows students to do just that. It bridges the gap. Also, as a young entrepreneur, they have an advantage because people notice you. I've been blessed with opportunities that I couldn't imagine five years ago. For example, I've taken the smart wheel to Hallmark Channel's Home and Family TV show, to CBS's Innovation Nation, to the International Consumer Electronics Show, to ABC's Shark Tank, and even to the White House. Youth have an edge when it comes to entrepreneurship because everyone wants to see us succeed. Business experts have volunteered their time and become mentors for me over the course of my two-year career. And they've... <laughs> <laughs> And they've taught me many things by example, of course, right? So, and which is in the real world, it really is the most powerful way to learn. It really is. And um, they also gave me the tools and opportunities that have made me who I am today. Also, kids have a naivety and a optimism that allows them to pursue things that most folks would consider impossible or too risky. I remember, um, you know, and I think this gives us an edge because allows us to accomplish things without being hindered by social norms and expectations. I remember uh, many times being able to bring my team through difficult situations by believing that we could overcome every roadblock, and we did. Perhaps kids are not afraid of failure because they have little to lose. And finally, young entrepreneurs are astoundingly creative. They connect the dots in ways that are hard for us to imagine. I think back to some of the creations that I envisioned as a 10-year-old, everything from self-shooting space stations to jet ed jets that made their own fuel using algae to Martian bases that used Martian soil to produce oxygen for breathing. Entrepreneurship is the mechanism to make these futures reality. What's great is that, you know, what's really interesting is that 64% of high school students in the United States are interested in starting their own business. That's over 10 million students. And I hope to see the day when every one of them has that opportunity to start their own business. They will never have a better time to try, and the skills they learn will help them in other areas of their studies. But I have good news. There is an entrepreneurial revival gaining momentum in our nation today. 
Students everywhere are seeing the benefits of entrepreneurship. So, youth, all of you that I see here in the audience, youth, take the initiative and reach out to professionals in your area. Ask them to share their experience and expertise with you, to mentor you and help you get started. Remember, your network is your most valuable asset. Now, professionals, seek out these young entrepreneurs and volunteer your time and resources. Come alongside and support these youth. They are our future. And also consider, it, consider implementing it into your business model, because it really is an investment in your company's future and theirs. And educators, work the themes of entrepreneurship into your curriculum. Work with some of the great programs that are out there, like Junior Achievement or Cambridge-based Innovation in Action. Continue to offer school credit when, to students who are in internships or vocational activities. And if a student wants to take a year to start their own idea and business, let them. It's a great opportunity, and they'll learn so much more. And finally, I think we need, we need a, oh, did I go past it? There we go. I think we need an Uber for entrepreneurship. I really do. I really do. We need a, an app that connects these young entrepreneurs and the professionals that they need in their area. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you how something like this might work. Okay, so can all of the young people who are here today raise your hand if you're interested in learning more about entrepreneurship? There we go. Okay, now I want all of the business professionals around who are willing to invest their time and share their skills with these motivated young people. Raise your hands. That's fantastic. Now, you all can meet during the next break and connect, but <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if there was an app for that? Just saying. <laughs> I would challenge everyone here to add entrepreneurship to your resume. If we just take that first step towards creating a culture that nurtures and champions entrepreneurship, win or lose, we will learn something new. Think of it as the next step of your education. Thank you. Thank you.